Hello, here we're going to calculate a t-test. Uh, we have Chow's database up here. We have lens type, lens type 2. And our question is, was there a difference between the aspheric and spherical lenses for baseline axial length? So to do that, we go to Analyze, Compare Means, and this is independent samples because the children getting the spherical lenses were different from the children getting aspherical lenses. So let's see how they did. So this is the match data set. So this is after we have matched the groups with propensity analysis. All right, so we go get our our test variable which is baseline we're going to do lens type um, the original lens type spheric versus aspheric and when you bring that over it wants you to define the groups and group one is zero group two is one and we will continue and okay probably should have labeled those that would have been good now we get our answer here, we get the means of the two, and you can see they're pretty close. The p-value is 0.78, meaning we have not rejected the null hypothesis. You get Levine's test for equality of variance because the assumption for the, um, the assumption is that the variances are equal. And it turned out it didn't like this very well because it rejected that assumption. So if we still want to use a t-test, we could go to a non-parametric design, but we can look at the t for equal variances not assumed. So we rejected it. So we can come down here. You can see that it adjusts the degrees of freedom for what it was at the beginning. And our P value was 0.78. Now, as I think about this, one of the things that we really should have done was split the file, compare groups uh, for each I. Because I is a repeated measure, we have both left and right data in here. And so let's do it again. Analyze, compare means, independent samples. Notice it remembers, it's very handy, SPSS is kind to us in this case. It remembers what we had done before. There are really no options that we need to uh, change. Uh, the confidence interval is going to be this confidence interval of the difference between the groups. Uh, so we're going to continue. OK. And we can see that again, we uh, rejected the, the assumption, the null hypothesis for the assumption of equality of variance. Um, and so we use this bottom line, the t value, the degrees of freedom. And we see once again, there was no significant difference between groups. It gives us the mean difference, which is simply the uh, difference between these means. So if you subtracted that out, it's a little less than, well, it's 0 0.805. And, or, no, excuse me, minus 0 0.039. Check me on that if you'd like. The standard error of the difference and then the confidence interval of the difference. If these overlap zero, they're not significantly different. You can see this has a minus sign and this has a plus sign. So they overlap zero, giving another indication that they are not significantly different. Okay, let's try this again. And this time, Let's look at 
the um, differences after five years. And so that's going to be AL5. And we could leave that in or take it out either way. Now we notice there is no difference in Levine, so we can use the top one. But there is a difference between the groups. Uh, group 0, which is the spherical lenses, grew a lot more in both eyes. Here we see the confidence intervals do not overlap 0. We get a mean difference of 0.6 or 0.7, close to 0.8. Uh, millimeters axial length growth difference between the groups. Now one of the handy things to do is we know that um, hypothesis testing is a two or three stage process. We have now determined that chance is really not the likely um, reason we got this statistic of 4.1. That's a pretty big number. And so let's look at the effect size. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this table. We're going to go into a Excel. I'm going to paste it. And then we're going to calculate the effect size. That's going to, that's going to be equals parenthesis. Um, the spherical lens, so that's really kind of the new treatment, minus the uh, aspherical minus spherical, divided by the average of the standard deviations. So we get an effect size of about 0.6 standard deviations, 0.8 in the right eye. Now, it's also nice to uh, calculate or to, to uh, create a, um, a graph. I'd like my graph to have labels. So, I am going to let's see. Let's delete this and copy that. And let's look. All right. Now I'm going to go, and I could move this n out of the way, but I'm just going to insert a bar graph right there, and then notice. I highlight the ends, but I really want the means. And so I just move it over there. Now there's a couple things about this. First of all, OBS doesn't like titles in the graph, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to um, make all my um, fonts 8. And I am going to go to adding a chart element, a title. I need the vertical. And that is axial length in millimeters. And that needs to be bolded and 10 points. All right. Now, these are pretty dark blue. Blue is okay now that OBS is an electronic version. So you can do color without penalty. But we're going to want to put error bars in here. And when we do, that blue is going to be too dark. So we're going to go to fill, solid fill. We're going to add a little bit of transparency to it. And then the next thing is I really don't care for these skinny little columns. So I'm going to reduce the gap width down to around 50%. And 
Actually, I can just type 50 in there. That gives us a little bit more width. Now, what we want to know is, or what we want to express on this chart, I mean, we have our p-value, and we can write that in our text. We could put little asterisks there, whatever. But um, we want to know, we want to plot 84% confidence intervals because we know that um, from the Goldilocks rule that 84% confidence intervals are just right in showing the difference between groups that uh, if the confidence intervals don't overlap, they're significant and an unadjusted p equals p less than 0.05. When we get to uh, analysis of variance, we're going to do this a little bit differently, but for now, we're just going to calculate the 84% confidence interval based on the individual means and standard deviation standard errors. So um, so let's do that. So first of all, we have to figure out what is what are the what so the confidence interval is the mean plus or minus t times the standard error. And t is based on the 84% confidence, the value of t at the 84th percentile with degrees of freedom and minus 1. So that's going to, let's first figure out our t value, and that's going to be equals t inverse. And for 84%, you subtract 84 from 100, and for some reason, it goes this way. So you need 16 times the degrees of freedom, or, well, comma, the degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1. So it's 1.4. And then the confidence interval is going to be this value times the standard error. So the confidence interval is 0.16732. And we want that for each of our values. OK. Let me copy this one, too. There we go. Um, all right. Now, to add a confidence interval to our graph, we go in, we click on click on the bars, and then we go to design, add a chart element, error bars, more error bar options. Um, oops, somehow I got off track here. Let's see. Ah, uh, there it is. Custom. We're going to specify the value. Now, it's going to be the same one, whichever way we go. So this is plus or minus. That's the value that's plus or minus. And it's there. We click here to get the ones going down. OK. So we see that for the left eye, there's a big difference between spherical and aspherical, as we showed in our t p-value being less than 0 0.000. And here, that's also significantly different. Notice that the left and right eyes don't overlap for, or do overlap for both spherical and aspherical. So even though we didn't run that t-test, we can see that those are not different. Now that's really not quite correct in terms of the p-value because what do we know about left and right eyes? They're correlated. So this should be a paired t-test if we're going in this, if we're comparing left eye to right eye. So this graph 
in terms of the error bars, are very conservative. In fact, <clears throat> we could test that with a paired t-test. But rather than that, I think I would like to go in and show you paired t-test. But I would rather compare before and after. So we're going to do a paired samples t-test. And our pair is going to be AL0 and AL5. So we're going to pair before and after with that. Ice. And our data is split by I, so we can't really do it the other way. But um, let's look at this. Now the paired t-test gives you one more application because you can plot the baseline by follow-up and get a correlation. And we get these differences here again. And we see down here that the, the difference between ALO and AL5. Ah, notice that's minus. That suggests that it went in the wrong direction. That's because if we look at compare means, we want AL5 to be here and ALO to be there. So we're going to hit this little, oops, we need to highlight it. We're going to switch the order. Hey, we're going to switch the order. So AL0 is on the right. Run it again. Notice we get exactly the same answer, but now we're in positive territory. Okay, big difference. No test of, of uh, equality of variance because the test is it's a, it's a one sample t-test of the differences. So all the differences are paired and checked. <clears throat> And we can do the same thing, copy and paste into Excel. And calculate our effect size here as well. So let's see, are we in the same D standard deviation? Yeah, so we could actually just copy this. Oops, both of them. Copy. Uh-oh, I think this isn't going to be quite right. Oh, yeah, there's no N. Okay, we'll put that. Oh, we'll just stick it here, and we'll fix it. Okay, so we want to compare the means, standard deviations, And we see the effect size for the pair. You can create a table with, well, actually, you, your confidence interval would be against zero when you were comparing this. All right. So that is the t-test and effect sizes.